What's up, what's up, everybody? We're here live again with Backwards Live. Today we're going to have yet another um, discussion about, you know, what seems to sometimes be a a more controversial topic. But before we get into all of that, I uh, just want to give you guys some updates. As you guys know, last week, uh, which is why we haven't been doing any shows um, backwards, uh, well, I, uh, on behalf of Backwards and Outnumbered, we just dropped uh, Ripper's Raps. Uh, part five, uh, excuse me, part four. Part five is coming soon, actually. Um, and we just dropped that. Uh, so you guys have been sharing it out like crazy. Uh, I see that you guys actually love that. It's a little different from what we do over at Backwards, uh, uh, being that it's strictly rap. But I, I, I love that you guys are showing the love and support. Uh, part five is going to be coming soon, as well as obviously some new um, Backwards music, just uh, material um, in general so we will be um you know putting putting that stuff out we'll have some uh, announcements uh about like the tours that are coming up um as well as the album release date i know everybody's been waiting for that the album release date which will be coming probably as early as next month so uh be on the lookout for that obviously we'll keep you guys updated more than likely Ripper's Raps Part 5 will drop before then, so you'll still have some material. And we'll still even be in the process of dropping the album. We'll still be drop uh, putting out some of those uh, raps, just so you guys have some uh, cool material. Um, but today, we are going to be talking about immigration and uh, the state. And we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, and how and cap and borders and all, ha- all of that. We've had this discussion um, you know, before there's been some, you know, anarchists and, you know, libertarians have kind of been split, uh, not necessarily down the middle, but if people are having, you know, we're having these conversations, some of it's dishonest, uh, but we are having these conversations, which I personally, I actually enjoy the fact that we're finally able to, you know, about all of these different things, these subject matters that have once been so you know absolute people are at least starting to think critically about these subject matters and it's awesome and i and i do love the fact that people are finally uh getting there and actually talking about these and thinking about these more critically and um of course today we are joined by our co-hosts at justin uh with justin moto and jared how now before i introduce our, our our actual guests uh that'll be joining us today uh i do want to Again, starting, I believe, on the first backwards live will be going live via being libertarian. So make sure you go and check that out. Go subscribe to being libertarians Facebook. If you haven't being libertarian dot com as well to um, get some more information on that. So it will no longer be launching through backwards on our Facebook page. Uh, backwards live will go through being libertarian as well as a series of other different things that we'll be doing in partnership with uh, being libertarian. But today uh, we are joined by Mr. Jeremiah Harding. Um, he is a fellow uh, voluntarist and uh, he's gained a, a, a solid following and talking about vol- voluntarist uh, principles. Now with uh, our guest more so Justin uh, seemingly uh, there's been some 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 um, uh, there's been some misrepresentations, but there's also been some disagreements about the positions uh, that he, that we all have. Uh, so I'm going to give everybody a chance to kind of state, you know, the actual position that they that they have on, you know, borders and anarcho capitalism and how all of this, um, you know, kind of ties into to to what it is uh, in our philosophy uh and, and whatnot so uh, i'm gonna give everybody a chance to talk we're gonna try to keep the interruptions you know to a minimal minimal and have a, a really honest dis- discussion now we have our guest jeremiah i'm gonna give him a chance to go first and, and, and jeremiah if you can just for for the audience state what it is you know your your thoughts on this this whole debate about, you know, the borders and immigration and how that ties into, you know, anarcho-capitalism. Part of that, but I doubt it. Um, so what, uh, what, what I, what I believe is that um, you cannot give state solutions to state problems and hold on a second. You if you don't mind me interjecting, Eric, they said that they can't well, no, hear him. Well, no, they can hear him now. I already, I already corrected okay. that. Go okay, ahead. Cool. Sorry about that, Jeremiah. Go ahead. All right. Um, 
my my belief is that you cannot give state solutions to state problems, and that means that essentially, uh, when I hear the word border and anarchism in the same sentence, not only does it seem uh, contradictory, but it seems downright counterproductive, because I believe firmly that uh, that that both parties uh, could have benefited from more civil discussion, sure, uh, in the past, but that uh, that. Fundamentally, borders aren't aren't property lines, and that that may be the ultimate distinction that's being missed here. I th do think that there are some other discrepancies between our arguments, and it'll be uh, pretty entertaining to see to see the arguments happen. But uh, basically, the idea of borders uh, in in my in my research has always been. Uh, interstitial areas between states and to strengthen those interstitial areas between states to prevent uh, ideal ideologies from entering your nation um, seems much more monarchist than anarchist to me and not to mention the fact that like I <laughs> I um I was called intellectually dishonest for insisting that uh, the political definition of borders is what uh, was meant by anyone when they consider open borders versus closed borders in terms of geopolitics. So, uh, I was a little bit hostile, to say the least. But it will, it will be an interesting conversation, I have no doubt. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, I appreciate you coming on. Now, I am going to give Justin because again, I think the back, a lot of the back and forth ha has happened with uh, Justin and uh, representing uh, Liberty Liberty Hangout. Um, so, Justin, if you could like express what it is exactly that you know, uh, just if you can, uh, you don't have to spend too much time. I know people may be tired of you doing it because you have uh you have <laughs> i'm getting a, tired on of a, doing on, it <laughs> on, on, on our show several times but for the people that are are new to this state your position if you can about you know the immigration and 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 and, and how we get to a you know a freer society uh a voluntarist society and how you think that you know with the role of a closed borders open borders just what are your thoughts you know on it and if you can express why it is that you have the the stances or the views that you actually have. Yeah, so I've made this clear plenty of times before um, that what my position essentially boils down to when it comes to immigration and when it comes for uh, everything is that I advocate for all land to be privatized and for the state to be abolished. That is my guiding principle. That is my ideal. That is what I strive for. Uh, when we're talking about immigration here, the question that I attempt to answer is, well, how do we get there? How do we get to a society where everything is privatized? Now, I've been on both sides of this issue here. I've been for open borders before. Um, there was a point where I finally realized, you know, open borders requires a government. So therefore, I'm only for private borders. And I didn't really want to take a position on the issue. But then as I started listening to some of Hans Hermann Hoppe's points and I started listening to Jared get more into this, I started kind of re-engineering my thought on it. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally... I'm a secessionist. I want to secede everything down to the individual level. So if we could get all 50 states to secede and let each of the 50 individual states set their own immigration policies, that would be vastly preferable to having the federal government determine who's going to come into all 50 states combined. If we can do that, that would be really incredible. And I think that through something like um, state nullification, I think it might be possible. So if the 50 states can set their own immigration policies, I would prefer that any day of the week over um, building a wall on the, on the southern border or, or, or anything like that. Um, but in the absence of that, if the federal government is going to point guns at the 50 states and force them to comply with a federal law, well, then what? Then I'm faced with this dilemma of choosing, well, which is going to be preferable, unrestricted immigration or restricted immigration? And so when it comes down to kind of uh, discerning which is going to be preferable here, I want to prefer whatever is going to do the least amount of harm. And I think that every single libertarian should, too. Um, maybe open borders will do less harm. Maybe closed borders will do less harm instead. But right now, I kind of remain unconvinced that flooding the country with a bunch of socialists and theocrats and refugees after for decades, libertarians have warned about the blowback theory that if you're going to go over to the Middle East and drop bombs, you're going to piss a lot of people off and they're going to want to come to your country and start doing harm. We're seeing this over in Germany. We're seeing this over in France. Uh, so I remain unconvinced that Letting all these people into the United States unrestricted is uh, going to do less harm than restricting them and 
keeping them out of this country. So that's where I stand on the issue here. Right. And I'm going to give uh, before I go back to uh, Jeremiah, I wanted to give uh, Jared a chance to chime in. Uh, you kind of have a similar similar view to uh, to Justin's. Uh, but again, just for our viewers, we have a lot of uh, maybe newer viewers, maybe from uh, Jeremiah's audience as well. Uh, could you give yours, you know, uh, and, and how it relates? You know, you, again, we, we're all in caps here for the most part. Uh, but how do you think, you know, when you talk about the border and immigration, I, I know it's a difficult conversation for a lot of people to have. So sure. so so what is it? Uh, that, you know, or why do you take the stance? To, what is the stance, number one? And, and why is it that you take said, you know, stance uh, when we talk about the border and immigration? My um, my stance isn't entirely unlike Justin's in that I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, borders should be closed or open or that there should be walls or fences or anything like that. Uh, what my position is that is that fewer political borders increases the territory controlled by the remaining states. A state is a territorial monopolist. So as you eliminate political borders, the remaining territorial monopolists come into control of more territory. So that de that centralizes the flow of tax revenue, thereby increasing the distortions of the market. And as they prohibit defense against invasion and forced inclusion, the utility of shared uh, commercial, com you know, common resources is diminished and the cost of that diminishment is offset onto victims of tax theft. That's my position against just, you know, unrestricted borders. Um, but I, like Justin, I'm a, I'm a secessionist too in that I feel that, you know, as many secession movements as we can possibly muster is what it's going to take. Not necessarily saying that uh, a state solution is the cure to a state problem yeah. and, and that's, you, that's something I, I want to add on to just to finish I, real quick yeah, yeah, uh, but but secession is the opposite of that it's it's taking the power back out of the hands of the state it's like an example i've given before that you have the irs and then you have the state revenue agencies um, if you're going to try to get away from the irs's taxation by going from maine to florida or maine to california you're not going to do that because they have the federal government controls all these this whole territory, right? And it takes precedence over these different state governments. However, if the federal government were to be diminished or uh, dissolved and the union dissolved and all the states became autonomous onto themselves, one could escape something like, you know, the revenue service in Idaho by going to Florida. And in that way, people could vote for the, with their feet, which would create a downward pressure on states to lower taxation and regulatory burdens as they compete to retain tax cattle. So our actually, my argument's not against immigration at all. It's not for the prohibition of immigration at all. In fact, my argument totally depends on immigration happening, because if people aren't allowed to move, at least to some degree, mm -hmm. then people can't vote with their feet. But it's, again, less a matter of open versus closed borders, which I think is just to be provocative, and more a matter of restricted versus unrestricted borders and restricted versus unrestricted immigration. And restricted doesn't necessarily mean prohibition. Right. If yeah, you want to finish your I, point, Justin. I think to to add on to that, um, essentially, I know I know that when Jeremiah started off with his his uh, introduction, he was saying how he doesn't believe we should have um, state answers to state created problems. Uh, but when it comes to things like decentralization here, if we want to secede down to the individual level here, um, in essence, what we have to do, and Hans Hermann Hoppe has written on this extensively, is the market, kind of, I'm sorry, the government kind of has to act as a market actor would if we want to get to that point. And no private property owner is just going to let every single person walk into their home un uh, uninvited. So if we kind of want to get down to that, if we have uh, 50 competing states in, in, in the U.S. here, you kind of get that sort of competition going. It kind of mimics the market. And then you want to keep seceding even further until it turns into private property. A note so on a monarchy, too, is that Hans Hermann Hoppe in A Short History of Man said that mon monarchy is not the most preferable uh, state of uh, state of affairs, but compared to any other right. form of government, it's the most preferable next to anarchy. And and and, and, th and that is and that is that is why too in this in this current political paradigm that we're living under, where we we live in a republic, but uh, people vote. So if you're going to bring in people that can vote, you're bringing in people that can be in charge of that government. There, I mean, if we lived in something like a monarchy, 
then maybe unrestricted immigration would be less of a problem. But the fact that these people coming here do have the ability to vote and the ability to influence our politics and what's done with our private property, that presents us with an even bigger issue. Right. And I think that, you know, just I'm not going to give any too much of my commentary on this because really, you know, I'm just just moderating. But I think that's where a lot of the the confusion you know, comes from um, and and I, I and I I, I do want to get Jeremiah's thoughts on this because I honestly think that it more stems from the fact that people don't like people talking about certain subject matters. I think the borders, uh, I think I think that's one of the things that people just simply don't want you to you know talk about. I um, mean, I think it happens on both sides because what ends up happening is that people are trying to seemingly get other other people to shut up because these are legitimate questions. Like when somebody asks, and this is why I thought why, why, you know, I used to be I was just like maybe a couple of you guys here where I was a, a open borders libertarian. Uh, and, and then I became, I was too, you know, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? So so I was uh, open because I, I defaulted to that. But when I started thinking more critically about it and considering uh, different things that are either in my control or maybe not in my uh, my control, I, the position that I take now is that I don't think it's a it's a it's a black and white issue. I don't think it is open uh, borders uh, versus closed borders. Me personally, I think it's a lot more critical uh, to be thought about, mainly considering the point that Justin just mentioned. And I think this is something that. Uh, that I don't think even libertarians talk about enough is that right now we do have a system in place, not necessarily we, but the state has a position in place in which people can literally vote to intrude on your private property. Uh, and that is something to consider when you and again, this isn't to be racist. This is this is, a, you know, almost nearly a, an objective fact that you can go research for yourself when you consider that these people that do tend to be immigrants, let's say, because I, I lived in the, on, on the border, um, and I can speak out of experience as well, the Mex Texas and Mexico uh, border, these aren't a bunch of free market capitalists and handcaps that are and coming, the people coming that live, over here. And, but, yeah, but, and, but hold and, on, I'm, go ahead, go ahead. but hold on, uh, but, but uh, uh, so, uh, and uh, we do have a system in place that does allow you to, that these people do tend to vote for expansion of government and i've seen people uh you know like the philosopher she's talked about uh this as well not the immigration portion but the fact that you have people that come from these like tyrannical governments that come here and then vote for the same damn policies that got their uh you know countries ran into the ground which is is, is insane sort of but that is something to consider and i know people might not want to talk about it but is the open border thing the 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 solution when you take that into consideration that these people aren't thinking like us they aren't guys that want to privatize everything they are not thinking thinking like this for the most part it's not to say there aren't individuals that do but you can look to pretty much every statistical uh uh and, and, and analysis of this that people that do come in that are immigrants vote for expansion vote you know democrat and vote for expansion of the state that doesn't necessarily when you take that into consideration does that actually get us to a freer society so uh jeremiah if you can like what do you have to say on that position alone when we talk about re nah, you know i hate to use the word restriction of immigration but do you not do you agree or disagree that that's something to be considered uh when we do have a situation that is in place when just using america then it's not anything that's uh uh, really unique to uh, America, but you know every country, so to speak, has uh, or not everyone, but most of them have this kind of democratic uh, kind of process in which you can really vote to intrude on people's private property. Uh, what do you have to say about that said scenario when we do talk about open borders? Would you rather the government just close the, close the shits off um, and and, and be a little more restrictive as opposed to leaving the borders wide open? Okay, so five major points. First off, my position is not for open borders. I am not one of the open borders libertarians that Liberty Hangout has been tweeting about. Uh, my position is for the lack of existence of borders, borders as a legal fiction. Mm -hmm. In fact, your previous guest talking about borders brought that up um, to very minimal avail. Now, the, the second point is that uh, trying to restrict immigration uh, to make a freer people does not work because when you, ha when you have a system in place 
for restriction of immigrations. It creates controls, and those controls always have to be moderated coercively. Those controls always have to be moderated and always have been moderated by a statist institution like the U.S. government, if we're uh, talking America specifically. And all of this uh, has been historically and will be uh, moderated by this group of people who have a very different uh, idea of what borders are than uh, the one that I received when I was uh, discussing this on Twitter, mm -hmm. which is the edge of anything, pretty much, which is the second definition, not the first political definition uh, that actually applies to the discussion. Right. The third uh, point uh, that I'd like to bring up is that when you have uh, this or coercive organization, um, and you're trying to use it to fight coercive institutions such as the state, um, more like aggressive, of course, because, you know, coercion isn't necessarily bad. I'm going to coerce you off my property if you show up uninvited. But, you know, essentially, um, the, the borders that we're discussing aren't just any line. They are interstitial areas between government countries. Mm -hmm. Now, if we truly privatize things like... Um, like Justin, I believe, is the one tweeting through uh, Liberty Hangout, uh, has told me uh, that he wants, then we have to first uh, embrace the idea that the current definition of borders uh, that anyone uh, seriously involved in politics will accept is not definition two from his Google search. It is definition one. It is a geopolitical boundary, and it is an interstitial area between governments. These interstitial areas date back to, like, I believe England and Scotland specifically, where there was an area where they Why weren't allowed to cross. Why is it position one and not position two? What, like, how do you determine which position because we're talking that seem like about... equivocation, equivocation where you can just no. pick which definition is and nobody else can? No, because we're talking about politics, and the geopolitical definition is that. The geopolitical definition is and has always been, uh, etymologically and factually, uh, the areas controlled by governments to control immigration, which is why okay. what we're talking about is immigration control. Now, uh, the, th the fourth point is that immigration uh, control in and of itself, first, it does assume that all of them have the ideas that would be harmful as a mob, uh, that would be harmful in a democratic sense. Uh, and two, it assumes that Americans don't have similar ideas. Because if you want to get real about like demo uh, democratic processes, which is part of point five, then we have to discuss the idea that Americans suck too. And that realistically, when Americans are voting, they're voting on single issues. As long as a politician gives them abortions or guns, you know exactly who they're going to vote for. Mm -hmm. So it, to, to, say, to say that because these people come from another country, that somehow their voting is going to be worse or centered differently to other people's voting, when the voting that we currently have landed us in this hot water theoretically in the first place is totally intellectually indolent, and I have no problem saying that. So, the fifth point is that voting, in and of itself, has been proven time and time again to not serve democratic interests or democratic ideals. We're not talking about the people's interests or the people's voice here. We're, th th this election and many other elections have proven handily that voting, voting is controlled by Pri well, by private slash public interests. It's controlled by, like, Bilderbergers and the Federal Reserve Monopoly. It's not mm -hmm. controlled by us. If it was, Hillary would be in office right now because she won the, quote, popular vote. But it's not the popular vote. Well, it's never been, in a, it's 40, never been a competition for popular vote. It's a, vote. it's a competition for electoral votes. And that means that when votes. we have people in office, when we have people in office that are evidence... That, uh, that, that the system is not controlled by the interests of the majority, uh, the interests of the majority, by the way, in this election being nobody for president, uh, because like 46% of people didn't vote, then we have a group of people called electors who are deciding the presidential policies. We have a, gr a group of local uh, people 
pushing their policies for uh, proposition and statutes and things that will control people on the local level. And yeah, maybe you could make the argument that, uh, that, that controlling immigration would keep them away from those laws. But you know what it'll keep near those laws? Americans. It'll keep people ruled. You're basically saying that, yes, I, I think it's preferable to be ruled under an American system of government and not a Mexican system of government. So we should pre prevent Mexicans from coming over here because they might decide to rule us in that way. Or um, I Sounds think good. that uh, that an American form of government is preferable to an Arab form of government. So we should prevent them. But you're giving a yes. state solution to a state problem because Mexicans and Arabs, they're all parts of destabilized regions caused by massive, massive uh, fraud and 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 corruption on an intergovernmental level. The U.S. government and its allies go around and destabilize everywhere, and we wonder why they want to come here. It's not because their place sucks, so they want to make this place suck, too. Well, it's because their place sucks largely uh, in part to the way that this place is treated is, there. Isn't place. that the blowback theory, though, that we were talking yes. about just before? Right. Yes. So isn't that an argument against immigration? No, because it's because again, I'm not I'm not on the side of immigration as you guys phrase it. I'm not on the side of open borders as you guys want to frame it. I'm on the side of no borders, admitting that they're a legal fiction and it and and but so hold on. That hold on, hold on, clarifying question, question. clarifying got, question. I know you have government. a question, but hold on. But I, I just for the sake of the conversation, I just want to make sure uh, we're, we're staying on track and we're being we're being honest because we all. We all uh, here, and we I think each individual here has individually said that they have we been said for it. if it was up to them, uh, and what they actually advocate has been for completely, you know, privatized, you know, borders, or you know, basically, essentially, a bunch of a bunch of uh, you know, private property is is essentially what we're uh, what people have been been advocating. I think Which everybody is here is, uh, here is, uh, ha has said that. Um, so, so let's make sure that, that we, we are, I, I, I want to make sure that I, I, that's I think what what the, say, because the point that you just made, yeah. uh, Jeremiah, just out of, out of that's sheer honesty, something we all you agree said, yeah, that, that's what something that everybody agrees, uh, agrees with here. So I, right, I think but that, the that, policy that, prescription is what we're discussing. Well, well, no, no, no. We're discussing well, what's more preferable, preferable. absent the, pre the ideal well, standard. Well, yeah. What's because the ideal standard here and this is why I said uh, in the introduction that I think a lot of this comes stems from all right people not liking that people talk about this as opposed to actually disagreeing with the uh, stance or agreeing with the stance because everybody here has said and this is why I get frustrated even even at this conversation because everybody here has said that well if it was up to us. Everything we privatize, you know, we yeah. represent whether the borders are open or closed. They're still illegitimate because the government is the one making the decision. And An that example isn't of that. Like everybody has 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 said said this. So I don't want to make sure I want to make sure. Yeah. You definitely and, and, and that's why when it comes to talking about things like secession, too, I mean, obviously we would prefer we, we advocate that there is no state. We advocate that there is only private property. But. Until we get there, I much my, I much rather prefer there to be fifty seceded individual states rather than one federal government. I'm, the I'm, argument I'm, is not. I'm that not going to say having fifty states isn't status because obviously it is. Right. Uh, but I'm saying that's much more preferable to a large federal government, and it's right. much easier to conquer. And smaller Could states be. are easier to overcome than larger states. I mean, look at and I talk about like the production of security or the production of border walls or borders in general. Disney World has border walls and private security and they use, you know, coercion and force to remove people from their park when they commit violence. But libertarianism and anarchism is not about the it's not about not using force or coercion. It's about not initiating violence or coercion. Absolutely. So, but and we talk about borders. and I'm I'll just 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 a second. And I talk about borders again you're equivocating because we've already prefaced the conversation by saying that we're we're comparing private property borders to state borders we, we're saying specifically that we want to replace state borders with private property borders and you say that that's not borders but and you know that that's not our definition but you continue to operate as though we're operating on the same definition as you 
Which yet can you, you see how that that wouldn't be entirely honest? Shift, yet you constantly shift right back to the borders that uh, that the state controls by discussing immigration from other countries. If you're going to talk about immigration onto my property, sure, I'll ca- call me and and you know maybe I'll invite you over and we'll have some drinks. But if you want to talk about uh, immigration from one country to another, that's a different sort of border. You, it's not equivocation. It's keeping the goalposts from being moved. That's what it is, because I'm trying to st- I'm trying to talk about the borders that people discuss and when we're they trying discuss to universalize open border as a concept. Borders. We're trying to like, universalize border as a concept, and clearly borders would still exist. Clearly, borders would still exist in a free market economy, just like roads would. Your objection is the same <laughs> as who would build the roads. No, it's not. Your objection is the same as who would build the roads, because essentially you're saying... I know you who, are, but what am I? Oh, my because, God. Because essentially you're saying that whoever whoever controls the borders gets to decide what no, borders are. No, we're not. We're not what, saying that it should be that way. It. We're saying that oh, absent so, so, the so, ideal standard of privatization, absent the ideal standard of privatization, unrestricted immigration is like... Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Finish your point, Jeremiah, if you can. Okay. So, like I was saying, if we're discussing borders closed versus open, then we're discussing state borders because closed and open borders are state concepts. You learn this in any international relations yeah, class. We, we don't disagree so, with that. So, 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 if we're discussing borders as a private property concept, which, by the way, is pretty laughable since it's a transubstantiation of the That's term anyway. But, 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 if it's... If, if we're if we're talking property lines, which aren't necessarily borders, um, then we're then we can discuss how maybe individual people could have individually uh, their own lines and their own rules on their own property. But get this: if you say that property should come with borders and immigration rules and constant like. Uh, uh, like sort of invisible lines, then you're essentially saying that you can trap somebody with your property. For instance, when I was on Twitter arguing with uh, Flintlocks, um, who who's on uh, Justin's Just side, I believe. Then, 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 then when when. We are started arguing about it. He started arguing against uh, right to travel, which you know is a concept for another debate. But he he basically said that you have no right to travel on private property, and that means that essentially you could signlessly control the area around somebody's house, and you could say, "I bought this area, so you can't leave." There needs to be limits to property. Con- control so that it's not used aggressively and part of that means that we need to acknowledge the separation between state borders and private property borders when we're having this discussion i'm not talking about private property borders when i'm talking about immigration people won't be immigrating to the country of jeremiah hardingstan when they when they eventually decide to uh, to to come to this anarchist society they will be emigrating to an anarchist society with lots and lots of private property limits but those private property limits aren't a border surrounding private property limits, which is what we're discussing. We're discussing whether or not there should be a shielding border around all these private properties uh, controlled by an entity that's designing these these borders for our interests because otherwise you can't decide to bar an entire group of people from entry or or, or leaving. And that's exactly what borders realistically do. Go ahead, Jack. Okay. Um, just because the government controls this and just because they shouldn't, it doesn't mean that everything the government does is equally preferable. So what you're saying is given that they do control the border, that they should also prohibit defense against force inclusion and invasion. So you're actually advocating government by taking that position and you're projecting nope. the response. No you're pro- no, no. Ahead, we, you want you want no borders, but I say private property would still have borders. So you're saying that you're against private property. Is that correct? I said I'm against private property borders, saying that you're you against cannot, pri- so you're against say, private say, property, say, 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 saying saying that you so should you're not against you're say, against you're you're against. Was it my turn to talk or what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're not allowing me to elaborate, then you're not going to get my position. You're going to get a pissy match. He answered the question sufficiently. I had another question. Go go ahead, Jared. Go ahead. Yeah, are you against physically removing people from private property who are trespassing? I never said that. I didn't say you did. I'm asking you a question. Well, you just said I'm against private property. That's what you said. 
Well, so, that's yes. what you said. You were against private property borders, so we'll get you must be you don't you must not believe in trespassing. So you must think that it's wrong to remove somebody. So you've who's already come to your conclusions, well, and you're not actually interested in my explanation. Go ahead. Explain. I am. Well, if you can, Jeremiah, go ahead and uh, answer that question. But if you reject private property norms, it can't be a debate. That's why I'm asking this because Fantastic. if you're saying, I'm so going if you're to, going to listen, I can tell go, you. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Go ahead, go please. Ahead. So. The first point is that if private property borders are what's being considered, then we have to consider the existence of state borders as surrounding a bunch of private property borders. If we're talking about borders in general, we're talking about something that protects a bunch of other borders, if you want to go on this like broadening spree. But basically, my argument is that if you don't mark your property, that you cannot claim that somebody does not have a right of way through it, and, um, and I've had this conversation in private messages, who would build the roads is a question asked by people who think that the only way to get people to agree to thoroughfares that everybody can access to get from property to property is to have a government. My argument is that people would rationally say, hey, you know what, I want to get from Bill's house to James's house. And maybe in order to get from Bill's house to James's house, there has to be a road that we can all use. And this that's road needs to go past argument. a bunch You're saying of that's people for there to be a border, property. there has to be government that's not and what true I'm saying, and what i'm saying is that when the when you have these private you're saying is that there needs to be a government for there to be not a border. borders there are limits and when oh, you okay. have so a border you're, just, you're, you're just saying that you're that. saying that people cannot come close to it you're gotcha. saying that people cannot cross over over this this imaginary line which is not always marked by the u.s government uh by any government because you know as eric july said we're talking america here uh and it's relationship to all other so places then what we're talking about is a private property then setup also, then what we're talking get... about is a private property setup uh invaded we by other people's borders. private property I thought you said because you were talking borders about... <laughs> are demarcations and interstitial areas between two separate territories so, and that means that all so of these borders so that, a... and that means that either that all of these borders would need to be in between and they would need to be agreed upon by everybody and that that agreement has always historically been met by coercion i want private property lines sure i am a private property advocate sure but I don't call them borders because so then we're right, so, sitting so here now arguing semantics. semantics. Hold on, hold on. Semantics. no, 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 no. Now, now semantics. Uh, uh, what a waste uh, of time. I think everybody here. So let, let's not let's let's try to at least move the conv conversation because because now it's semantics. So right now, let's just just for the sake of a conversation, we're talking about when we mention borders. Uh, even if we talk about the, and I'm gonna move this question over to Jeremiah first because even if we talk about borders in a sense and what we use is 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 the state. Uh, and basically it's separating a bunch of us uh, are these made up imaginary lines uh, that, you know, usually are enforced with uh, violence uh, and, 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 you know, in use of in really initiatory force. So we assume that let's say borders are that. But like, for example, with Justin and he's mentioned that he is a secessionist, wouldn't inevitably a secession it would it it were, it, were it would actually result in more more governments essentially because yeah, this you, is, you would have more quote as Jeremiah is calling them political borders if you have secession right because and, now and I you'll think, have the I border of Indiana and, you'll have the border of New Jersey you'll have the border the more of Texas secessions, yeah right and I think the more secessions that you have the closer it gets to uh, just by default it really gets closer to, to to private to actual like the private property limits that. You mentioned because again, like if I have, let's say the United States is a big, uh, you know, let's just it's the big one one federal government. If that's the seas in the fifty states, and then like let's say Texas the seas in the two state three states, you know, and then though in the, you know it's just more it's more political borders is what what it is. And the closer you get, however, the closer you get to the individual, the closer you get to actual private property. So I think that what, what ends up happening is that, and I think that's why these guys uh, take the position that they that they have when they usually kind of uh, use them both as if they're the same. Uh, and they say, or they'll say something like, well, government, you know, what we want is a bunch of privatized borders, not not uh and i think that's because when you do talk about secession again this is just out of sheer logic you are going to test to secede right now in three in three different states because it's big enough more than big enough to do that california there's too three, there's three states that didn't the three governments that didn't exist 
uh, before. So it's more than three. However, the power that Texas once had was decentralized. So it did get closer to the to the individual uh, one way or another. So so when we use borders in, in that sense, do you understand why I guess the 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 the, the, the when we talk about private property limits and i love the way that you that you use that uh use that word do you not agree that even the more successions that you actually have the closer just just speaking logically you do get to private property because if vendor if like in a rothbard uh mentioned this if if, if you know uh, he has a great quote on which he's talking about this very very idea why can't you know if uh the we recognize canada and america is uh you know i think, I think he used new why york he used he used new york city as his example he right. was talking why can't the city secede from the right. state and in a, why can't uh why can't a borough secede from the city why can't a block secede from the borough why can't a single homeowner secede from that block right exactly so uh yeah and then basically again to the point to where you have literally private property and people ruling over there and having really authority over their own private property as opposed to this one giant deal now, do you understand like that position? And again, this is really stemming from uh, uh, Rothbard did a great, great, uh, uh, he, you know, he, he kind of mapped that out as well. When we talk about borders or when people, you know, Mitchell, let me not say people, let's just use actually individuals like uh, Justin, for example, when he's talking about secession. And you do you understand how or do you even please feel free to disagree or agree uh, and, and how that ends up becoming uh, a bunch of privatized borders would be the the the. The uh, it's not necessarily wrong in in a sense, even when you're talking about the political borders, so to speak. Well, uh, I would say that there's a three point response to that. The first point is that when you have that that many governments, sure, it could be less powerful if there wasn't some sort of intergovernmental treaty between them. If there was, it would descend very quickly into feudalism or, in the case of uh, the Civil War, the secession would be crushed by the bigger government and everybody would go home bloody or dead. So, uh, th that, that secession argument essentially only operates as a rhetorical device in the real world because the real world operates with governments saying, you can't do that and stopping secessions. It's happened repeatedly. Generally, governments want to maintain as much cohesion right. in their tax farms as possible. Right. So... That brings me to point two. When you have all of these private property, quote, borders, if, if they came from this secession, this, uh, this hypothetical perfect secession where everybody was nice to each other, um, well, I don't you know, think anybody's saying that, and, though. I don't, and, I don't... And, and, let each, and let each other succeed, which, which is what would be necessary in order to get this to happen, in order to prevent a Lincoln from rising to power. But wouldn't, and, that, um, be, wouldn't that be with anything that happened, though, aside, nice even, even, outside, even outside, outside, of the, outside of a secession movement? I mean, I, I don't – I think that's – and I'm gonna be completely honest. I know I'm moderating, but I think that's too that's too easy of a <laughs> of a of a, of a position to take. Uh, it's almost like I'm in the center of a universe because that same using that same logic, it doesn't matter what it is. At the end of the day, you know, some the, the your neighbor is going to if if it is to quote unquote work, and you do get all the way back to the individual, it's going to require uh, some type of uh, uh, agreement. Uh, re regardless, so I think it's too easy of a position, but not an intergovernmental one. Well, but either no, it, but either either way, I mean, whether it be in intergovernmental or not, I mean, uh, I think that's too e it's too easy of a of a position to take because you're essentially saying, well, and I th I think not, well, it, 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 if we we take that to the to the logical conclusion, I don't know what it is that you personally feel uh, is the is the way to get towards a freer society, but it's going to essentially require the same thing. And it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be uh, a thing that just people, the government, even right now, as it exists, is not going to just allow you to say, fuck off. That's not how, how it ever works. So we have to start, you know, I think this is where I, I get frustrated to be fair. The, the, the conversation gets, gets, uh, or the argument is being made on both, both stances where people are taking these easy, easy stances where I don't have to universalize my own argument. So we got to universalize it because you're correct in saying that, well, it's not going, it's not, it's highly unlikely. It's a big hypothetical that this is going to be pretty and it's going to happen like this. Well, whatever it is that you, given a scenario and the political appeal climate. That's incredulity anyway. Well, hold on, yeah. well, hold on. But <laughs> no, regardless, because the political climate as it is now, it doesn't matter what it is, no matter even what it is that you personally 
think, um, which I don't know, and please feel free to uh, let the let the uh, audience know that you think is going to get to a free so- freer society. It is going to have just as much pushback because, just like you said, the government wants to uh, uh, buy, you know just really on, on a default stance they they want to try to maintain as much power as they can so it doesn't really matter even if, i think it's uh it's too easy to say well how do you get no borders right so so and i, I would like you to explain yeah. that if you could well, that, 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 if, well, well if you okay mind, if, jump, if you don't mind me jumping in here first i mean i haven't really said much here yeah, because sorry, it's really sorry about that of, i kind of cut I kinda, a lot of arguing semantics over really yeah, substantive debate here so i'm glad we're kind of getting into the brunt of the argument here finally um but if we're going to kind of oppose secession efforts on the grounds that, well, the the government may eventually uh, centralize once again, then I think that's kind of like the same Kyle Wagner type minarchist (laughs) argument that we can't try anarcho capitalism. We can't can't try anarcho capitalism because a government may reorganize. So I think it's kind of the same fallacious argument there. And we've talked in detail before. We've done a ton of shows on secession where we've talked about how decentralized territorial units are much more difficult to conquer because if if let's say Russia wants to invade the territory we call the United States, it's going to be much easier to do that when there's one federal government versus 50 competing states because they're going to have to conquer all 50 different territorial units. Whereas if you just have one federal government, they just have to march right into Washington, D.C. So I, I think that we should completely support That's how the British single conquered the se- Indian. Yeah, I, I, I think we should India. support every single secession effort possible well, to kind of decentralize power and make it much more difficult for neighboring states to invade. And uh, just for the sake of the audience, if you could, Jeremiah, because uh, I've asked I've asked this question to the last uh, few individuals, excuse me, that have been on our show. Um, you know, like these guys support secession effort. Even me personally, I support. Uh, I've been very, very loud about the Texas uh, kind of secession efforts. Uh, because if we can get away from the feds, uh, I mean, I'm going to, you know, we start getting away from, you know, and then it's like, all right, well, they see that as a working example. So let's let's keep this going. Let's uh, let's uh, keep breaking it down, go all the way to the, you know, why can't we go have, you know, counties and, uh, you know, be their own little deal and not having to be ruled over by representatives of other counties, counties and such and such. But what is your position as far as, all right, well, we each all here have said that ideally, you know, bunch of privatized a, a bunch of private property would exist as opposed to this territorial monopoly on really use uh you know really initiation of force um and ultimate decision ma- decision making what is your position uh as far as all right well we're here now at the, we can't you know kind of pretend this away uh the state exists as it does we are not living in a free society uh so how do we get there um or what do you think is the most most effective uh way and the more realistic uh, way of getting to 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 the to the free society and voluntary and even uh, you know of an ancap society. Okay, so the first point would be that I am not a secessionist; I am an abolitionist. So um, that that's a good general rhetorical way of saying it, and I'll break it down into several pieces. Um, you froze up on me. The first piece. Is Absolutely. I am sympathetic to the idea of some other. Okay. Uh, am I smooth now? Yeah, you're good. You're good now. You're good now. All right. Oops, go All right. Bit of a delay. So, so, so uh, what I was saying is that I'll break that down into multiple pieces. The first piece of which is that, uh, is that I am sympathetic to the secession movement. I am absolutely sympathetic to the idea of breaking away from government. Absolutely. But. You, if you break away from government by adding another government, it is solving the state's problem with a state solution. If you consider the state as Rothbard did, a giant monolith which has always enslaved man, uh, then that state that has always enslaved man is not going to stop enslaving man because it's a smaller one. It, it may be more difficult to invade a smaller territory, absolutely, but guess what? If that territory sucks because it has a terrible government and it's small enough to be another Guam or another Cuba or another fucking uh, Vietnam, um, then they'll just be crying out for more government in no time, for another bigger government to come save them. And that's just a, that's a path to rulership right there. So you want to talk how we get there, that's not it. What is it is realizing that government is the problem, as Reagan said, but then, you know, added a bunch more. Um, you know, 
And realizing that the policy prescription for an anarchist society has to come from anarchist tenants, and part of those tenants are not giving the state more power. So immigration is a problem now because, uh, because like an invasion in general, you know, people say we don't want to be Germany and uh, you'd be bombed and raped in the streets and all that shit, you know, which is a grotesque appeal to fear, by the way, if you want to talk appeals. Um, and 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 if we don't want to become them then we need to not give governmental solutions to this problem and admit that this problem is created by government pu pumping in immigrants oh, we all agree on and, that. and and we destroying the and destroying the, the places they come from so uh if we talk about invasion invasion so, would only, so if we talk about invasion invasion would only would only be discouraged by by a, a, a populace that is armed and capable of defending themselves small militias private defense networks uh, local local uh, or organizations of private people deciding that they're going to defend their neighbors it, with like the cell four one one app yeah. <laughs> that, that's not secession <laughs> secession is one government breaking no, not off as a smaller no, one that's what from you, a larger that's how you one define it. no 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 what that's how just, it's always been defined. No, but no, no, I know it's like if I Google secession right now, it is not necessarily uh, synonymous. Okay, let's to, do that. Yeah, yeah, if I Google property line right now, it says border as part of the definition. <laughs> so. Okay. There's that too. We've no, already cited no, Google no, as a, def I, I, as a dictionary, and we've all and we've, and we've all agreed that there are two different definitions of borders, haven't we, Justin? When well, you posted well, that to Twitter, in the action of withdrawing formally from membership of a feder uh, federation or body. Formally, what is a formal a political state? So, you, so you're, you you're advocating said, violent what revolution. Said, what is formal initiatives? What, what do you mean? What's formal? No, what, what I'm saying is that what you wanted to Google definitions. So all right, formally, like I don't know what you are right, now. I'm gonna Google formally and let's see what let's see what formally means now. In accordance to the rules of con of convention or etiquette, officially is the second definition. However, however, what you just described, if say my guys, if, if not my say if we set up shop in this uh this apart uh in a in a building that I'm at. Um, mm -hmm. and we go to the local sheriff's office and we say, your services are not going to be needed. Uh, fuck off. Um, and uh, we might get a pushback. Let's just, uh, we might not get a pushback. Uh, but yeah, we recognize Hyper threat management has gotten very minimal pushback. Well, exactly. Okay. Then, but, but even if, if we all do that and, and we all acknowledge that, uh, we, 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 uh, they didn't we, dismiss we, the we do, police. We do though, not to be fair. We, we, well, yeah, they, they, didn't, they supplanted but, the police. The police don't patrol the areas. They do. They did not walk into the police station and say your services are no longer. <laughs> well, no, they didn't. But, but, oh, yeah, because that would have been badass. Well, well, well but no, but on, but on a serious but... note, but on a serious note, though, on a serious note, if we did that, if if we did that, that would still be a secession. So I don't know why. Yeah, we but, keep... but, but, but and, and to add, I and to add on to that, Eric, if, 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 if you guys yeah. just let me talk real quickly, because you make a great point in comparing it to secession, because when we were talking about secession, Jeremiah said, well, if a state secedes, they're just going to get conquered by the bigger government. So if you get a bunch of anarchists with, with guns, why are they not going to get conquered by the bigger government? Well, probably because the guns are much more sophisticated now, and there are so, many, and there and there are many, many more of the common folk than there are government officials now, which wasn't ne necessarily true back. So then, then. you're the making a good the population. The pop now. The, well, <laughs> so you, you want secession, but you just don't want to call it that. But now we're making back, an now we're for back abolition. To no, but no, now we're back to semantics because, again, I'm looking at the dictionary definition from Merriam-Webster. All it says for secession is the act of separating from a nation as, or a state and becoming in, and becoming independent. So, as okay, Justin well, and I both and, said, and Justin and, said, and I both said, can and, I have and a second? A Justin and I, Jeffrey one Hunt. second, one second, one second. Justin and I both said that our arguments for secession were as strategies for abolition. Abolition through secession. Yeah. So setting them up like they're mutually exclusive, yeah, I think, not. is a bit. And I think, that, uh, and I think the that's question. more semantics than anything. So, so, so you're saying that when you uh, that when you totally abolish, I'm saying that smaller states, states are so, so easier you're that to when you over, totally you know, overcome states, and privatize so than abolish totally than larger abolish states. states. That we end up with smaller states, um, you know, and that that eventually become no states, and that that's not mutually exclusive. You're so saying I, that I, I'm kind of confused you're, here, Jeremiah. Do you think we're just going to go from this massive? federal government where we also have global governments we have the united nations we have nafta we have the world trade organization uh, are we just going to go straight from that to anarchy 
Uh, do you think those global would, governments who are trying to globalize that. political power are going to let you make smaller governments until well, they if eventually? If they're going to let exist? you make smaller governments, they're not going to let. Then you they're not going to let you do the fuck off either. You yeah. know, but this, but that's why I'm saying we got to universalize <laughs> the logic here because we're we're not. What we're saying is like, well, it applies here, but what we advocate, and I, we're both sides are doing this to be fair. But uh, we got to universalize it. If they're they're not going to make, if they're damn sure not going to let you succeed. It, uh, they're not going to let you do whatever it is that you think that you want to do in order to get to a freer society. But again, I think this comes from more semantics because when I think of secession and even by dictionary definition, it does not imply, it doesn't even imply necessarily political action. It just that dictionary. Is, it, it, it is just that dictionary also says feminism is for equality of sexes. Well, all right, so what's the what's the point of going off of these definitions if we're gonna throw them out the window? <laughs> okay, um, so then, so then, then let's go I back. The first thing you said is that we pulled off one of these definitions. Go off of that definition first off, and what, but you said we had to. And what I was going to say a little Buddha, earlier Jeremiah. was that there was this guy named that 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 Justin Moldau <laughs> blocked on Twitter. His name is Jeffrey <laughs> Hahn, and he advocates a method of thinking that didn't that clashed with Liberty Hangouts. That method of thinking is known as the trip thinking. I'm leading up to something. Can you can you like go listen? Ahead. Are you impatient? Are go you ahead. like yes, autistic? I have a high time well, preference. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go I ahead. Go end ahead. This. We're ten minutes go over ahead. schedule. So, 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 so as what I was saying is that this guy advocates a method of critical thinking known as trivium, and it involves looking at the root definitions of words. The root definitions of borders have always been political. The root definitions of feminism always been a movement for females to get uh, equal to men. And the and root definition of anarchist has historically been leftist. Is communism, no, so I think you should be. I, you can't be identifying as an anarchist here, man. No ruler. That's what the root definition of anarchism is. And our well, common parlance. Is free. Common parlance has kind of changed the definition of some words, in as things have gone on. But Not everybody. I just don't understand why. Why the ninety percent of this debate here today has been semantics? Because the semantics, the semantics, <laughs> is not moving the conversation. Uh, because I would, I would say, and I, this is just me being completely honest. What you just defined when you when you mentioned about people, you know, basically not accepting this authority, not accepting this rule in a, in 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 a, in a general area or whatever, I consider that a secession. I mean, at the end of yeah. I, I've ne- I, I will consider and it, that. And and there was there was one thing that I kind of wanted to touch up on when Jeremiah was talking about secession here. He kind of made it sound like a secession is getting rid of one government and forming another. But what a secession is is restoring the sovereignty to a government that already exists it is saying oh, really? is the is the texas state government saying we're no longer going to recognize the, the rule of the federal government and you want to break it down even further you have a county in texas saying we're not going to recognize the rule of the texas state government and then you have a, a municipality say we're not going to recognize the rule of the county government until you have an individual saying to hell with all you people Except that that has never happened. But nothing, no, what you. Except what we when have, West Virginia left happened. Virginia. <laughs> Except when the a, United Kingdom left uh, the European Union. Or, <laughs> I don't know, it never happened. That's not secession. They're still the government. Oh, it's not. See, now, oh, it's now, not secession. Okay. See, it was now, exactly now, what right, Justin right, was talking about. Right, They're right. still the government of, the, of Great Britain. But, but you just said secession. But you just said before, I'm, I'm so confused here. Before Justin you were saying that. secession involve, go, involves governments, now you're saying it's not secession because there is a government. So. No, it's the same government. <laughs> secession involved right, forming man. a new government. When the South seceded, which <laughs> Brexit was not a secession, let's just get that right out of the way. It was an absconding with a political union. It was not a secession. Oh, Jesus it, it, was, it was not a secession. The government didn't grow. It didn't split. Territories it's not a didn't divide. It's an absconding didn't the divide. They just said, okay, we won't absconding. accept your specific <laughs> let's, let's rule. Abolish. That's not what secession has ever been. <laughs> Every possible secession in history has always been something different than what you want to say it is. So right, you can dude. say so, so you can say common parlance all you want, but unless you're willing to admit that common parlance says you're wrong and that when secession is discussed, they're discussing taking their government and breaking it off into a separate government, a then you cannot government, discuss common less tax parlance. Revenue, which interferes with people's lives less. But anyway, I digress. Well, just, I mean, we want common common problems, by, by your argument, man. then we should have the largest states in the world. We should abolish government by making them as big as possible, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that, and that's not by my <laughs> well, argument. No, my I, argument I think, is abolition. I think, all right, so your position is How do you think there? I'm still so but, confused. But you, How do you think we're going to What's your there? prescription? <laughs> my thing my, okay, is, well, it, well, if I can, if I can have a, a period of uninterrupted speech, I will you tell can you have two minutes. We were 15 minutes over schedule. We need to wrap this up. Two minutes. Go. Okay, okay. So that. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. Not all the interruptions right, and no, no, semantics. No, go, go ahead, Jeremiah. Go ahead, man. Okay, go ahead. so 
my pre- my policy prescription. Uh, follow, follow. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Idea. Policy follow, is a status follow. word, man. You can't say that. No, it's not. It's <laughs> no, we don't want to entrap him. I just want to know. I just want to know what he's recommending. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so my policy prescription is you you encourage total and factual decentralization by forming militias, by forming defense networks, by forming mutual aid societies. You encourage this to happen all over the U.S. until the services that the state provides are no longer necessary, and in fact, things that people would disagree with the existence of. That isn't secession. That's I, I inter- consider that's it a secession. Mutual- I, 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 do, do you guys consider that a secession? On, on a serious note, I mean, dead ass serious. <laughs> It's functionally different from a secession, like privatizing everything, like uh, making it so that the territorial monopolist on ultimate decision making and the production of defense has less tax revenue and less territory. I would, I would so call since, that. Since what we're what, what this discussion here today has been centered around is been the land that the government calls the borders. I know Jeremiah doesn't want to call private property borders, but let's just let's just take a closer look at this land, and we recognize as libertarians and anarcho capitalists that it should be private. So that land specifically, Jeremiah, how does that land become privatized? Well, first off, you need to not ask permission. You need to not secede. You need to take it back. And that means essentially you have to have enough people uh, convinced enough of your positions in general that they can that, that, that they can have some sort of confidence that when they take it is for ethical means because the state uh Operates like what on happened constru- in Oregon, uh, and they got thrown like, in like this, because the state operates on, you- on constructivist <laughs> ideals where right, they right. can say that they exist, they can say that they have rightful hold and rule here, even though they fundamentally are just an organization of people with badges and guns saying you have to do what we say. I this is that. this is well documented. In I mean, I, I I agree with that 100 percent. Though I agree with that being a a a, a method. Because I, 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 this is what I've preached, for example, um, you know, when I go, you know, city to city or universities, when I talk about people just simply recognizing, and it's not necessarily simple, but uh, recognizing the state first and foremost as something, this, this illegitimate, coercive, you know, uh, uh, or, you know kind of aggressionist uh, uh, entity. So, but however, you know, getting enough, if I, I, I don't see... I wouldn't think, and uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Dice over at Mises Institute, he talks about this as well. He would define what you just said as a secession. I would define what you just said as a secession. So I think we've spent the last 25 minutes uh, arguing semantics. talking about we semantics. We, we, we didn't like, really and, and talk it, about how do we get I there. Don't think, yes, because I don't think secession necessarily has to come by way of uh, you know voting. I don't think it has to come by way of even uh, you know, utilizing the political process or forming a new government. If if the if a group if everybody in Texas said fuck off to everybody around them, I would consider that a, as a, as a secession, just as I would consider if they somehow put it to a ballot initiative and they said uh, and everybody voted and they got a, I, I, it still be it still. Yeah. A well, then I guess I've already though. seceded. I've already succeeded in seceding personally because I already don't recognize the authority of the state, and by that logic, I should be. Able able to to go on my sovereign happy way and do whatever i, I want all right I but you said that's that not you happening need, because if i tell you the need, state hold on. i'm a you seceded said, person you said, a sovereign human we've seen right. on youtube what happens to those you people. said so you then said it sounds you, like your prescription you, on, can I make is a point one real for failure quick? Go, he go said ahead. that uh, no. Need, I told you what my hold prescription on. No, no, was. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Jay. Backed go it ahead. off. Go ahead, Jay. Hold on. You, you said that you needed to. Right after you said that you didn't need permission and that you shouldn't ask permission, you said that you needed to convince a lot of other people that to agree with you, uh, presumably because you need them to also use force with you in your, in your, in your militia. Right. I need them to be on board because get this: if you don't convince people that government is not necessary, you could have a zero government society, and one would form the next day. Okay. Okay. So I don't dis- I don't necessarily disagree with that. What, what? But given that that's the case, would you not agree that it would be you easier for you in this group of people to do something about a municipal government who only has resources to the taxes it collects from a single town, or would it be easier for you to do something about the federal government? that collects resources from every town and city and every state and every county in the country. It depends on whether or not they actually allow me to it fully depends? see. It depends? I mean, no, 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 you, you ask the question. federal government. If you want my answer, you got to listen. Go ahead. Go, so no, go it ahead. Depends, 
So it depends on whether or not they want to let me do this. Because if they don't want to let me do this, then they are going to use force to stop me. But that's sort of like they did with Eleanor, Waco. Right? Sort of like they did with no. Oh, they need, sort, of need like, sort, of like, sort of like they did with Ruby Ridge. I don't, the I don't need their permission. I don't need their permission. I need a bunch of people who understand the truth of the matter, which right. is I that agree. government is fundamentally a coercive monopoly on force to say no at the same time. I agree. The individuals quote seceding doesn't do jack you didn't answer shit the, question, though. the individual you didn't answer seceding the question, though. but you, you asked me a new question on. no no but, uh, but hold the on uh, if i if i can if i can you'll uh, understand you'll because... understand here that government is coercion and force none of us is unclear on that the question is which government is easier to privatize and get rid of is it the municipal government that only has resources to an, a single town or is it the federal government that has the resources to have every town in every state in the country it depends on whether or not. No, it doesn't. You, no, no, it de- you no, know you that neither of them are going to let you do it. You, you know neither of them are going to let you do it. Or are you going to interrupt? Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, I'm going to interrupt. I want you to interrupt. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Go ahead, Jeremiah. So, it does depend on whether or not they will, because if you take out that municipal government, if you if you say, hey, we're going to secede, we're going to say, hey, you know, we don't want to be under your authority, and the federal government, which gave that municipal government all of its imagined authority, uh, comes in with their That's bigger right. weapons and says, no, you can't, like they already did during the Civil War, then it doesn't matter whether you took that over or not. It doesn't not increase your question. freedom, it just absorbs resources, your policy prescription so will end in failure well you're but 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 do you agree uh because you said and i was one, one last point that i wanted to mention um and i wanted you to touch on if you could because you mentioned that you know that, that i guess the state won't recognize if you say i'm a i'm a seceded individual i'm a free individual you've seen what happened to them but how does that not change or how does that even change if that's your militia, like that's the, it, it, it's yeah. the same, it's the same thing as you sent run into the same problem is that, you know, the state necessarily is government. Going, are these not, all there, powerful? There's going to be a pushback. I think it, no matter what, right. there's going to be because of what the, what the institution represents and what it's based on and what it's backed by, what it's predicated on. It's going to be some type and some sort of pushback, but whether it be yeah. you saying you as an individual are a free individual or whether it be, uh, fucking fifty of us say it. It's gonna be the same result as as far as um, you know. There's going to be that that initial pushback. Now, yes, I have better chance of withstanding that pushback by uh, you know having you know numbers and other people that I like minded individuals that also recognize that hey, this uh, this is illegitimate. This is this is a wrong. Uh, this is a coercive entity. This is an aggressive entity. If if everybody recognized that, uh, yes, you're going to have a better chance of withstanding it. However, you still run into the same problem because you're right. There are other individuals that say, I'm a free. I'm free. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. And the state says, well, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, and, and they go they kill you. They'll lock you up in a cage. They'll do that. But that same thing would happen or it would, it would you know, they would at least attempt to. Uh, no matter if you had, no matter what the numbers are, if it's just you or if it's 50, even uh, just, uh, even just making the numbers argument, you're admitting that the larger state is harder to overcome than the smaller state. But yeah. here is, but here is the problem though. Mm-hmm. And this is a problem that you need to overcome. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a successful revolution, everything is controlled by the state, everything. Right. So the only way to get these people on board is to show them that that's not necessary. And the only I way agree. to do that is to start taking individual services and, and making them private, not I taking agree. not taking the borders and saying, hey, you know, we can, we can prevent all problems possible by preventing these evil communists from voting. Uh, we, 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 we need all of these individual <laughs> services to be <laughs> private so that everybody can so that everybody can take a deep <laughs> breath and say, you know, we don't need this coercive monopoly on force known as the government right. to do these things for us. And only at that point will you ever amass the numbers necessary but for I can't, a, either I, a I, peaceful or violent revolution. That right. is a secession. That's decentralization of resource well, control. Well, I consider it a that I can't, secession. I, 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 that's I little battles. I, I, would, I would, me personally, and I don't know anybody else that, I, again, I, I've seen these guys at Mises. No, I'm good, great friends with these guys. 
guys who are probably a lot smarter than all four of us put together who have said the same thing. Jeff Dice being one of the main ones who talks about secession all the time. And I know that for a fact, you know, and I, we're going to have him actually on the 6th on being a libertarian. And I'm going to ask him that question because I know I already know what his answer is going to be. He's going to consider, and I personally consider, what you would say. And that's a, a group of individuals uh, basically rep- recognizing what the state is and recognizing this uh, illegitimate, not asking for mis- I will consider that that yeah. uh, a but, secession but that's effort. All, Eric, that, that, that's all getting back to the semantics of it all. But if we're going to talk about is this going to work, I just can't really comprehend how it translates that if a smaller decentralized government, and we're recognizing governments are these all-powerful, coercive institutions, they have guns, they point them at people. I can understand why uh, a small, if a smaller decentralized government is going to get conquered by a bigger government, I can't comprehend how all these little rogue anarchists are going to stand a chance against them themselves then. I don't just, understand how that computes. And, and well, just okay, one point then, about, oh, excuse me, just one ahead. point about secession and decentralization being two different things are actually not. Secession is a shorthand way of saying the decentralization of decision making with regard to with regard to territory. It's decentralization of decision making. No, it's Government. not mob rule. It's going from a larger mob to a smaller mob. Sece- indiv- there might be individual secession where so township goes, mob- you know what, maybe we'll so break up our township. Because it's a smaller mob? That's Private absurd. property. Excuse me, sir. Say the individual property owners in a town secede from their township and they no longer have taxes and it's just left with private property. That's mob rule. It's still mob rule, even if it's smaller. Oh, my God. Private That's property why we're anarchists and not rule. minarchists, okay, right? Okay, we've, we've achieved cultural Marxism, I think. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. You, want, you want to talk about that? Let me just read you what I said to Kyle Edward Hannafy in oh these comments. Oh, my God. Here. We're 26 said, minutes over this. Let's wrap this up. If borders and property lines are un-anarchist, how do you ever expect to successfully secede without your anarcho nation being usurped, occupied, or annexed? And I answered, property lines are not borders. Sure, you can and cherry pick okay. definitions and conflate the two in a sort of blind swinging attempt to make a point, just like Justin has. But the political definition is what we're discussing. And it's intellectually dishonest to insist otherwise. The word, in a territorial sense, dates back to the border between the governments of Scotland and England, controlled by, you guessed it, government. The term hasn't changed since, not in the sense that it's being discussed, and certainly not in the sense that the political elites would endorse. If anarchists gain any traction with stronger borders to prevent a modern red shift, which is what Justin insists, the state will retain the status definition of borders, no matter how he ought Artistically shrieks. They're not private, though. If he wants to be pragmatic, a good start would be realizing that most status concepts, including borders, belong in the dustbin in an anarchist society. Because while his argument isn't a direct appeal to authority, one can bet his ideas or and chosen method of spreading them appeal to authority figures in a very specific way. They can get their strong borders, and they can count on allies in the supposedly libertarian masses. What could possibly go wrong? We need to use the definition, so should, so definition should the free, of borders, should, but Justin is the one do- appealing to authority. <laughs> Jesus fucking uh, Christ. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, because, because stronger borders, by, by this definition... You're appealing to the state's by, by definition def- of borders. By this You're appealing to the state's definition of borders. That's literally the appeal to authority that you just... So I, 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 got a, I got a question for Jeremiah. To have any greater emboldened... Hold on, hold on, go ahead, Justin, I know you had a point. One last question to ask here, I know we've been talking for a really long time here, but we look at something like... I could go on for hours more, I got another drink. We, we, ahead, we, look at some, we, we look at something like the Free State Project in New Hampshire where these libertarians are trying to achieve a political migration in order to turn the state and their local communities libertarian. So should something like that, uh, would the state and those local communities not be more conducive to liberty if they were to bar these big government socialists and communists who want to completely eradicate private property norms from entering in this, into this community? Well, two questions. First off, if that's the case, then – for, th- then, then you're acknowledging the existence of voting as the mechanism by which uh, we we achieve change. You're acknowledging government decisions as the process by which we achieve anarchism, That's which sort of I makes asked. my I point. Asked, like, which more which sort of makes my point. And it and it certainly is more conducive to preventing uh, to, to preventing their particular kind of government. But what it's not more conducive to preventing is the kind of government that is fostered by attitudes of supporting it for the common good, for the temporary, uh, for 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 a temporary purpose. 
What was that? What did you say, Jared? Is he reading something? No, I'm looking at you guys' faces. Nah, I have yeah, my camera. His camera's up above us, uh, above his head. But um, well, again, uh, I, I think that a lot of this conversation stems from um, from semantics. And I'm really frustrated uh, that we <laughs> that we went there because I, I just think that um, in a lot of cases that we're talking it's about still- the same. We had man, we're refusing to agree on definitions. We we, yeah, we probably I, spent an hour and fifteen minutes trying to debate what the word border and secession, secession means, and probably man, spent yeah, yeah, five I, to ten minutes I, actually yeah, debating how we get and, there. And, and, and it really, <laughs> a lot of what of what of what you said, Jeremiah, like I personally uh, I agree with, but I, I would not if somebody if somebody used that and said this is how we get to a freer society. Um, I would not. I would absolutely consider that um, a, a secession. Uh, I know the guys at Mises would consider they have literally kind of exp- expressed that as a secession. I don't think secession is something that is uh, that means that you have to even form a new government. It doesn't mean political action. It does not mean uh, automatically uh, voting or anything like that. It simply means that, you know, pe- uh, you have this this one entity and you're essentially breaking away, uh, you know, from it. And yes, maybe. Uh, well, that's what no, that, no, that's what I would consider. Consider a secession, uh, our, and which is why I would consider what you said uh, is, which is something I agree with. I think that's how you're going to get to a free society. You're essentially saying that there has to be an education process. People are going to have to recognize the state for what it is, um, and and uh, uh, what it actually is, and actually, you know, do essentially defend themselves uh, from it. Because as you also said, the state isn't going to just uh, say, "Oh, well, it's okay. You guys want to." Uh, uh, because they are not designed uh, to do that. So no matter what it is, whether it be four or five of you, you as an individual or 50 of you or 100 or 1,000 of you, there's going to be some type of, uh, you know, pushback uh, regardless. There's going to gonna, gonna be a pushback. But what you just described is a secession uh, effort. Um, I don't think that they're, you know, a secession abolition. Uh, I don't think those are necessarily mutually, uh, you know, exclusive. Uh, but I think we've we talked a little too much about, you know, semantics, and we actually went over, we've went over the time. It's all it's eight thirty. Um, I appreciate Jeremiah. And I want to get you on the show if we can again uh, to talk about this some more. You offer some uh, some good commentary, uh, and uh, hopefully everybody that you know it, you know saw this really got some different perspectives from it, which is what we were trying to you know accomplish. Definitely, when we get other people on to not necessarily just, you know, have this echo chamber of of of, of the same old cycle of, 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 of stuff. Let's have different perspectives. And ultimately, we all want a freer society. So how do we get there is uh, what we talk about. So so big shout out to you, uh, Jeremiah, for, for coming on the show. Um, again, we'll get you on. We'll stay in contact. We'll get you back on uh, so we can, you know, discuss uh, things. I'll be on as often as you want, as long as I still get the file from my YouTube. Hey, check that out, by the way, viewers. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which again, we'll have that uh, on deck. So most definitely, um, big shout out to everybody that watched uh, today. Uh, be sure to visit beinglibertarian.com. dot com. We will be going live on there starting, I believe, on the first. So with that being said, until next time, peace.